Andrew, how are you? I'm very well, Tazi. Awake, alive. I have a coffee. I'm safe at home. <laughs> well, that's that's wonderful. That's um, all of us want to be, and that's what we want to hear from our fellows, and in fact, um, everybody around the globe, that everybody is safe and sound. I agree. Um, yeah, it feels good to have a lot of time at home. How how have you been spending your time with all this, I guess, extra time, extra time to do personal projects, personal things? Well, yeah, things um, have been kind of like limited and uh, squeezed into, it seemed more likely in, in one box. But um, while well, this is the situation and uh, it's not only... Uh, it's not only me or certain group of people. It's uh, pretty much the problem of the entire world. Mm-hmm. And uh, we we got to deal with the situation and uh, we have to keep moving um, even with our limited sources. And yeah, so we are pushing through and um, I wish best of luck for everybody. Mm-hmm. Do you find it um, an easy adjustment for yourself or have you find it found it stressful? Have you found it challenging in times honestly i have found it uh, pretty challenging lately um because uh, the business scenarios are uh, totally different um we have been doing a radio show and tv show so our the studios are closed so we have challenge to keep up uh, with the momentum of our weekly routine um, of course, those are the challenges, but um, I'm very confident that uh, we'll be keep moving and uh, we'll be keep producing more content for the audience and um, and the, whoever is following us. That's awesome, Tazik. Um, maybe we can, you could give some, I uh, guess everyone that's watching, um, a bit of a background on um, who you are, um, where you where you come from, where, when you came into Canada here. Um, I, I guess a little bit of background about yourself. Well, um, of course, um, the people who don't know me, my name is Tosi Kaziz, and uh, I am basically from Pakistan. Um, we definitely, uh, like many other people, um, we moved here in 2006 for, of course, um, uh, better opportunities, uh, for better lifestyle, and, um, of course, to explore more things. And uh, right now, uh, I've been working with two different platforms, having affiliations um, with uh, Shaw Spotlight, which is local TV channel, and CFCR 90.5, which is uh, radio frequency for people of Saskatchewan. So I do weekly radio show and uh, TV show along um, the rest of the team. And both of the shows called uh, Batak, and which literally means like meeting, gathering, or uh, drawing room, right? And uh, yeah, so we're just uh, doing that and uh, having this um, unfortunate situation due to COVID-19. Um, as I mentioned earlier, all things are pretty, you know, uh, sketchy. Mm-hmm. And sometimes uh, it is very challenging in regards to business as well as um, hobbies such as radio and TV show. So I have converted my one portion of basement to studio so I can keep up the weekly routine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's important to, to keep busy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about you? Um, of course, um, Andrew, I know you very well and I'm pleasure meeting you. Uh, but uh, many people who will be watching video on this side, they would love to know For about sure. you. And what do you do? What is your background? Well, I'm, I'm from here, from Canada. I grew up uh, on a small town, uh, 30 minutes outside of Saskatoon. It's a place called uh, Bonda, Saskatchewan. I grew up on a farm, actually, just outside of the town. Um, grew up there, farmed my whole life, worked with my father. We had a manufacturing business. Um, after high school, I graduated, came into the city here, um, and I started pursuing uh, my passion in filmmaking, photography. Um, so I do weddings, events. Uh, work for small businesses, real estate, kind of a little bit of everything to do with photo, video. Um, yeah, it's been it's been really good. I've I've really enjoyed um, meeting lots of people and creating memories for people. So mm-hmm. it's 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 been a lot of fun. Well, and that think, is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I think we both have the kind of the same. We both like to 
conversate with people and bring people together and, and learn stories and storytell. I, I, I found that with you with, with meeting you to Zeke. So. Exactly, exactly. Of course, um, we definitely want to and we should actually aim, um, aim the goals that where we can uh, bring content where not only we learn in order to prepare and produce um, while we are actually ordering and producing, but uh, we also bring such content that other people are uh, learning from us. So I found it a great way. Um, so I can fulfill like my hobbies, like what exactly I like to do um, in the mean. In, in the meanwhile, like other people are uh, being provided the platform where they can learn mm-hmm. this stuff. Yeah, and express their opinions and you provide that kind of space for them, which is good. Yes, yes. Um, have you noticed, Andrew, that in this uh, COVID-19 situation that um, uh, people have been more connected um, uh, through, of course, the virtual um, ideas and uh, social media websites and um, other, uh, other 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 media facilities has been more admired and uh, more being used. Uh, at the same time, since we can't go out as often as we used to, and um, the stores are closed, many businesses are closed. That is the unfortunate part of this scenario. But at the meantime. Um, we are more connected to our families. We get more time to spend with each other. We get uh, more opportunity to admire each other's efforts in our lives. Yes, I, I completely agree. I mean, this I from what I've talked to people through through these video chats about is like this is a time for everyone right now. It's slowing down. They're introspecting. They're taking time to realize what's important. Realize mm-hmm. that family is important. The friends that they have in their life are important. And yeah, people are connecting through the ways that they can, right? Through social media, through video chats like this. And people are having, I think, really good conversations about things because we have the time and um, the space, I guess, to be away from work and all these activities that usually just dictate our lives. So we have time, again, to just relax and, and talk and think and ponder and reflect, I think. Exactly, exactly. And today is um, my actually first uh, video session um, for my YouTube channel. And um, I'm sure that you have been gone through such uh, such sessions before already. Um, for I think uh, rest of the talk, we are going to uh, the, the topic we have chosen, I think it's going to appeal many of our viewers um, that people either uh, your followers or uh, people who who are engaged with the Batik studio, um, they have different backgrounds. And living in Canada, it's Canada is like more likely a montage that people from different backgrounds come together and uh, we mm-hmm. share festivals, we share trends, we share um, different culture, cultures and everything. So this is beautiful. And uh, keeping that in mind, um, uh, like for the rest of the talk, I think we are we are actually going to talk about the social differences between Eastern and Western world, right? Have you do you have any experience living um, more likely uh, to Eastern side of the world or mm-hmm. well, I've or, done or some, any other I've, country? I, should I guess I I guess I've done some traveling. I've been in countries like um, Taiwan, um, and and when I was in these countries. I really did notice the, the difference in culture and the difference in the way people interacted with each other. Mm-hmm. And just, I just guess the way of life and I, a place that I really noticed it was in the parks. You go to a park in Taiwan and you go to a park here and it was like night and day, like the, the people and what they were doing in the park, um, the art that they were doing, um, the dancing, stuff like that that was going on. It just seemed like a different world. Um, so it was definitely interesting to see these different cultures and like, and, I, I like, kind of like what you said that Canada is a place where it is very multicultural. We have all sorts of walks of life, kind of all living together in one place, which I, I think it brings challenges, which is, but it also ha- it brings a lot of beauty. I think when people can understand each other and learn from each other, um, I think that's that's beautiful when people. Yeah, I, I I like the part you said um, about the parks. So. Um, like the first thing, if we compare uh, parks over here are, of course, um, they're more like um, 
greeny and uh, very, uh, you know, very, very lively. But uh, parks in back home, uh, yeah. even if you go there, like whether daytime, evening, or even sometime like late night, parks are more festive. Parks are more uh, lighted up. Parks are like pe- people shut up their stalls. People um, yeah. they have like more activities for kids. And uh, like it's it's more lively, um, and then there are like no limited hours. Uh, well, certain parks are limited hours, and they close at certain time. Uh, but um, if we talk about like parks and um, outdoor activities, it's a whole lot different um, than here. And of course, there are good things and the bad things, and good things over here as well. Um, mm-hmm. But those are the things we don't see in these parks where um, they're not as busy as um, Eastern world. Yeah, I've definitely, definitely noticed that when I was, when I've been out traveling and it, it's always interesting to see different ways of life and, and it just makes you question how you, we live our lives here. And it's, mm-hmm. it's always good to see different, different things like that. I wanted to bring up, um, just some slides here and I, I just wanted to see what you think about these. They're just like random quotes off the internet and things like that. Um, I'm just going to read this. Um, yeah. This is kind of like polarizing and, but I thought I'd bring it up and it'd be kind of good to start with. Cause I, I feel like there's a lot of people that do kind of view um, culture this way. And personally I, I don't, but we can kind of discuss it. Um, it's been said that East and West can never meet up. They mm-hmm. differ in history, religion, political system, and so on. The major difference between Eastern and Western culture is that people in the East are more conservative and traditional than general population in the West. Did you find that with kind of your move here from Pakistan? Was it a tough transition for you to um, have that difference in culture and kind of relate to people maybe? Was that ever a problem? Yes, of course. um, Of course, I have seen, um, well, like a whole lot of difference between um, cultures and uh, societies, uh, especially the background um, I am from. It's more likely rural areas, and um, that, that's actually beyond it. Anybody, uh, any part of the, any part of Pakistan, when they come to Canada, they have a cultural shock. They have in, environmental shock. They have um, weather. You know, yeah. So everything is pretty much different. So it takes uh, quite a bit of time to get used to these things. As far as it's concerned that um, people in, in um, Eastern world, they are more, uh, more open to the public. Um, they, mm-hmm. like, they are not like, um, I should say. Less individualistic. Maybe. Yeah, they, they, they are not like less individual, just like the Western people. They, um, how should I phrase it? They are like more open. Uh, like once they have something achieved, um, this is one big difference. What I noticed that once they have uh, something really achieved um, over here, I noticed that it's more likely teamwork. People like to share and give credits, but in back home, um, people more likely take credits. I am, uh, of course, belong to the same background. And that being said, I'm not saying that everybody is same. And um, uh, neither over here, everybody is same. We see many yeah. people claiming the credit for entire achievement in this part of the world as well. Um, that is one thing. And the second thing that over here, which is good thing about Western world societies that people they don't actually really care about other people's life. They don't, um, they, they don't uh, want to interfere other people's lifestyles, how they're living, how they are, what exactly they're doing. Um, if we compare to back home uh, people, of course, they care about themselves, but at the same time, they are um, having sneak peek to other people's lifestyle as well. And um, I think um, I'm not defending any group of people, but I think this is more likely uh, cultural. This is how the society over there have developed. And um, just uh, like kind of like wrapping up this difference that its parents are more involved that even in the, in the childhood, if they are not 
um, keeping up with such activities where they are interfering other people's life in front of their kids. So, and then keeping more focused um, on the kids. So the kids, of course, raise up uh, more focused on their lifestyle, uh, uh, improvement on their lifestyle rather than interfering other people. Okay. So you would say that people, people from Pakistan are more kind of society-based than individualistic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just bring up this uh, next screen here. Um, the crucial, can you see this one? Yeah, the crucial differences uh, which distinguish human societies and human beings are not biological, they are cultural. Mm -hmm. For me, that's um, kind of saying that um, we are all kind of the same people, we're all human beings. Um, but what kind of distinguishes us is like the way we go about the world and, and, and um, our cultures and what we believe and what we value. And um, we all kind of are the same people, but we, we all kind of just operate in different modes and different ways. And um, I guess we have to learn to maybe be okay with that and be okay with other cultures having a certain way and realize that no culture is the right way. And mm -hmm. I think you, you kind of mentioned on this before that there's just, pros and cons of each. Um, and if we can just accept that and accept people for kind of what they believe, um, yes. I think we can, we can understand and get along a lot better. I, I think instead of being like, no Western culture is the right way and people coming here should assimilate to us or you know, likewise, which I think is it's, it's some people have that belief, obviously. Um, but um, I think we can all live together in harmony if if we have some understanding and some broader perspective. Yeah, exactly. Um, see, we have to understand, uh, whoever is listening or watching this video stream, that uh, there are good things, bad things, good people, bad people everywhere. Mm. The beauty of our lives starts and beauty in our life is when we share the good things, no matter uh, where they're coming from. Um, and when we start avoiding and ignoring the bad things, which is society. And I don't think any culture or any um, religion or any scripture um, teach us that, right? right. So uh, it, it is us, you know. Sometimes what we think we like it, we think, okay, this, is, uh, this should be the rule. Uh, for certain aspect of our lives, we think this is the only thing which is right, right? But yeah. um, if we compare it with other people's lifestyle, it might it, it might not like necessarily uh, good decision or good choice for them, right? In their shoes, the way they are raised up, the way yeah. uh, the the background they're from, too, right? So we never um, like draw a line as a like final thing, you know. No, I agree. I agree. Um, I think another difference that um, you had brought up um, when we were talking prior was um, just even living in, in family situations in the household, how um, a, a lot of Eastern, uh, Eastern countries, um, they live with a lot of family in the household. And I think you had that experience growing up as well, or not growing up, but uh, once you were married and whatnot. Yes, yes, of course. Um, uh, in in back home in Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, like in in that part of the world, um, even uh, in uh, like not too long ago, like even if we uh, talk like historically, uh, like nineties, eighties, there was like family system, or maybe like even earlier in this part of the world as well. But talking about specifically in. Uh, Eastern side of the globe, that um, it's it's more a family system, um, where, where where all the family members. Um, um, I'm not talking about just a husband, wife, and kids, but um, of course, husband, wife, and uh, most of the time, like husband's parents and uh, maybe his siblings. So they're living all together. 
Yeah, um, extended family living together. Exactly, of course, and keeping um, everyone's uh, privacy in mind, and um, you know, and they, they're they're sharing happiness, they're sharing the bad times, they're they're going through um, every situation together. You know, mm-hmm. uh, of course, there are some some pros cons to this, but um, this is the way. Uh, families have um, raised up in in back home, mm. but if we compare more likely in uh, Western world, um, this being said, I'm not going to like uh, demean any kind of like society, but over here, this is the lifestyle actually where uh, where husband has to work, wife has to work, and they don't have enough time to either like take care of their kids or if one of them has parents, so they don't have to. Uh, they actually cannot take care. Um, mm-hmm. their parents, so they end up uh, sending either their kids to um, childcare or the care homes for senior citizens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, like the Eastern way of doing it and the way you have you have experienced that. It, like personally, coming from the Western world here, like I I can see the great value in that. Um, especially yes. with what you said with both parents. Um, both working and stuff, having a grandparent or an uncle or an aunt taking care of the kids um, and keeping these kids in a, like a family setting. It can be, I think it could be really powerful and, but it can be challenging. I can see people here, like the view on that would be like, Oh my gosh, living with my mother-in-law or, you know, or <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it could be it, crazy. It could be like a um, very awkward situation from uh, people living here. But one more good thing about uh, living all together is that, um, you know, the, the kids, I think they will have uh, more exposure to the world. They, have, they will have more opportunities to learn because, uh, you know, they have two generations, um, lifetime experience from two, two different generations to learn from. Of course, their parents and their grandparents. Yeah. Right. So they will have more things to learn uh, collaboratively when they're living with, uh, like within as, as a big family. For sure. You have kind of more figures around you at a time and it's, yeah, as a kid growing up, that could be, that could be very beneficial. I kind of had that with um, my childhood, actually, we lived on a farm um, and we lived in one house on the farm and then literally a one minute walk was my grandparents' house. So we kind of were raised by our grandparents and raised by our parents at the same time. Not exactly the same as as the Eastern world, but as kids, we definitely loved that. Like we loved being able to see our grandparents all the time and be around Mm -hmm. them. Um, And I think it just kind of um, just builds a sense of community and and stability and support um, when you have more people supporting each other, helping each other emotionally, spiritually, um, financially things like that. So, but I guess in the Western world, it's like people become more independent and we kind of, it's easier for people to have their own house, have their own space, have their own privacy in that way. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I also want to highlight one point. Um, I don't know if you, how political you are, but um, uh, if we see um, politicians lifestyle or, are politics like policies being implemented in uh, these two different societies? Um, how, how do you see, like, what are the major differences between uh, politics here in, in uh, West world and over there in, in uh, Eastern world? Mm-hmm. Well, what is Pakistan's um, like form of rule? Is it, is it like, a, is it, demo- it's not a democracy, is it not? No, it is democracy over there. Uh, it is a democratic country, and um, but like what I what I wanted to highlight is that like the politicians' lifestyle, their behavior um, through through campaigns and mm. their behavior after uh, becoming or holding um, like a certain position. I have, um, like, I, I do keep an eye on, on news from back home. And, um, of course, I'm fully aware of uh, political situation in this country, in Canada, as well. And it's a whole lot different in, mm-hmm. in, um, in behavior of politicians, in, um, in, in the, like, like the policies, and, of course, how they change situation to situation. 
um, where I find, well, of course, I'm not saying that the, all the politicians from both sides are good or bad, but um, over here, politicians or uh, people who are serving other people, they're like more really um, down to earth. They're more excessive. Um, anybody easily can, uh, can access to them. Um, they can just like with their offices. I'm, I'm just talking like very, very basic you know, I'm starting from base and as compared to back home where politicians, um, if you have one election even once or like twice, you are like really up there and you wouldn't be as easy to access or as easy um, to meet as you were before winning the elections. Right. Okay. And other side of it that um, when it is campaign time, the situation is other way around. Like you are um, meeting people on daily basis. Uh, of course it happens over here, but over there it's more likely limited to one that election campaign season. Right. Um, and then after winning the election, it's different. So wrapping up like this <clears throat> thing from my side or the politicians are like really VVIP, but over here mm -hmm. uh, we don't see the VIP culture much uh, which i admire on this side and i hope my listeners and viewers from um, eastern side of the world they will understand and they can relate to it okay so you see people people from canada or politicians from canada are more you said down to earth accessible well, yeah, exactly. I'm not talking about uh, keeping up the promises uh, from both sides. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, um, how they change, like, situationally. But um, over here uh, to, a, like, a normal, like, a common citizen, like, uh, just like you and me, they are, like, down to earth. They are, you know, accessible. Okay. But back relatable, to relatable. Maybe. Yeah, so back home, it's it's like different. Okay, they're more like royal figures or... Exactly. Movie stars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, that, that is uh, uh, something. And uh, one more thing, I, uh, unless you have any, any uh, slide to share. Yeah, sure, I can throw another one up here. Yeah, just pull up one and we'll discuss that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, that was the one we already did. Yeah. I think this is kind of also important to kind of just touch on. Um, people without the knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. Yeah, I think this is uh, something we a little bit already touched, um, like at the beginning, yeah. that. Uh, we have to stay connected with our culture. We have to stay connected uh, to our like traditions. Mm -hmm. Traditions they are more um, like more more productive and beneficial for majority, like the people surrounding you. Like not really. If it's good for you, that's okay. But if it is good for you, and at the same time it's it's uh, not really beneficial or harmful, uh, in fact, for other people, you know. So those things we should avoid. So. It is 100% true, and I agree that without um, connected your culture, your language, your, your values, your traditions, um, you're just like a tree without roots, of course. Mm -hmm. So the culture is our roots. That is our recognition that um, stand us out like from other people. That is our recognition. For sure, yeah. I think what I take away from that is that we should – take the time to learn about what, why our values are what they are in the certain parts of the world um, and look into them and look into them and see the flaws and everything and not always think that our culture, like I said, our culture is the one culture or this is the way the world should be and, and see the pros and cons of each culture and how we can kind of all come together as difficult as it can be. Because yeah. I, I know it happens all the time. People kind of butt heads on certain issues. And when when one culture has one issue and one culture is 180 degrees to the other, it can be really difficult, right? Um, yeah. 
and uh, there's there's certain things east to west that have that. Some of them are similar, but then some are just like one one or the other, right? Exactly. So, uh, but I guess it's, it's it comes down to the understanding of why things are like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, um, uh, we are talking about two different worlds here, and uh, <laughs> yeah, two different this, worlds. Yeah, this yeah. is uh, pretty understood that uh, it is not uh, like it is pretty understood that we can't like bring uh, all the differences into one video session. There is like educational differences. There is um, raising kids difference. There is workplace differences, like uh, many, many differences. And of mm -hmm. course uh, we will touch base with other differences in our uh, next video. What do you think? That would be great. We could talk more about culture, religions, education and I'm up for it. I'm always up for talking more. So yeah, exactly. And uh, of course, for for um, we are sharing the viewers, we are sharing the uh, listeners and followers, Andrew and I. And um, I am very, very, very glad to have you, Andrew, on I'm video glad session. To have, have and, you here too, Tazik. It's great. Exactly. And um, I assure you guys that we will be bringing more content where. Uh, not only you guys will be, uh, we will try our best that we are bringing such content that you guys are uh, learning from it. And we are giving uh, all of us actually an opportunity that uh, we can um, explore more and we can learn stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes, explore, learn, teach each other, ponder things. I think that's all important. I just wanted to leave off on this slide here. Yeah. Uh, we may have different religions, different languages, different colored skin, but we all belong to one human race. And I think that's something yeah. we can all fall back on and remind ourselves of. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. That is, uh, that is one <laughs> very strong similarity that all of us can relate to. And we can end our differences in many uh, points and we can come to the similarity and uh, share the beauty of our lifestyles and share the knowledge. I and I think uh, that being said, we will, um, if you are okay, Andrew, we will uh, wrap up our video That's session. Perfect. I love that. And, uh, thank you so much. Whoever is um, watching us and uh, please do subscribe YouTube channel, Batik studio. And of course, Andrew, yeah, if you guys want to leave a like on um, my YouTube channel, it's Mind of Andy. You guys can hit subscribe. If you guys, I'm going to be talking to a bunch of other people about all sorts of subjects as well. So exactly, awesome. Well, thank you again to Zeke. That was great. It's always great thank chatting. You. Thank you, Andrew.